Sean Ames here from Heart of America FPV, and today we're gonna be looking at some drone racing bags. Now, in my opinion, one of the hardest things to shop for in this hobby is a good bag because there's so many options, they're expensive, so it's a big purchase, and it seems like there's a lot of different people using a lot of different bags. There's absolutely not one best bag. There's gonna be a best bag for you, and so my goal in this video is to help you identify which bag of these four that I have experience with is gonna be the best fit for you. Let's turn this around really quick and take a look at the bags that we have for this shootout. Now the first bag that I wanna take a look at in this shootout is the FPV Session Backpack by Think Tank. Now this is a bag that my daughter Maddie had given to her by another pilot at IO. And so I really wanted to include it in this shootout because I've got experience with it. And to be honest, I was pretty impressed with it in general. To be honest though, this isn't exactly the fairest bag for this shootout because it is a much smaller volume than the other bags in this shootout. Think Tank does have another bag called the Airport Helipack. This is actually the bag that Nurk has used for several years now. Since this is his channel, he went ahead and shot me over a quick video clip explaining why this is the bag that he chose to use on a daily basis. Late night Nurk here. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my bag, which is the FPV Helipack uh, by Think Tank. The reason that I chose that bag is I think, one, it has the largest volume, and two, it's the least opinionated on how you should build it out. One of the things that was really important to me when I was choosing a bag was that it doesn't like force me to do things in a certain way. The entire Think Tank Helipack is literally just like a big open crate. You assign the little Velcro pouches however you want. That gave me the most flexibility in how I decide to have the bag set up. The Torval, the Betaflight, the, the Low Pro, in my opinion, tend to be a little bit more opinionated. They want you to put your radio here. They want you to put your batteries there. And that just rubs me the wrong way. So that's why I have the FPV Helipack. Um, the same is true of the FPV Session. It's a very similar style of bag from the same producer. So I just wanted to throw my two cents in there into the ring. Anyway, thanks very much. Back to Sean. Now back to the Think Tank session that I have here with me. This bag had been set up for Maddie. I was curious how much of my stuff I could get in it, so I went ahead and tried to fill the bag up for me. The partitions in this bag are completely flexible. You can move them around, but I was actually really impressed with how they were initially set up, so I didn't move them very much. It was nice that there was a specific spot for my radio. There was a nice spot that fit the goggles well. Now this might seem kind of silly, but I actually use three Tupperware or tackle box containers in all of my bags. And this is something that's really important to me. It might not be important to you, but it allows me to sort extra parts and keep everything really nice and separated and easy to get to. I wasn't able to use all three in this bag and a charger and a bunch of my other tools. So there were definitely things that I would have to leave out of this bag. So to be fair, I went ahead and left out two of the tackle boxes and just used one of them. And I was able to get most of the necessities in this bag. No problem with some extra props, tools, battery charger, all that kind of and stuff. So this would be a great bag for someone that just wants to get their gear to the field, but isn't necessarily traveling across the country, you know, every few months for a big event. The second bag, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on. This was actually the very first drone bag I ever bought. This is the Low Pro. I believe it's the BPX2. It originally came with some more dividers and stuff inside. I definitely did not like the way that it was set up, but I ended up modifying it to where I would put my tackle boxes on the right side and then my radio and goggles in the bottom of the bag. This bag had a ton of fatal flaws. First off, I never really got into strapping quads to the outside of the bag because the clips like fell off and vanished within it had to have been a couple of weeks the other thing is that obviously you have to flip the bag over to open it up that's a bummer the zip pockets on the side open the wrong direction so all your stuff falls out and then finally I, I stopped using this bag on a regular basis because the zipper crapped out it was a cheap zipper and uh, really out of all the bags this is the one that when I purchased it I saw it the most it's definitely the one bag that I'm gonna suggest you do not purchase at this point in time it's not the best value for sure so now we're definitely getting into the good stuff here this is the beta flight bag this thing got announced like four minutes after i ordered my low pro bag at the time i was kind of kicking myself because uh it had a lot of things going for it that i was excited about the way that the quads clipped to the bag is super nice got a ton of comp 
compartments. And in general, I initially thought that it had more storage capacity than what the Low Pro bag did. So I went ahead and unloaded my Low Pro bag at the time into this bag to see how everything fit. There was a lot of cool kind of features to the bag that I was super duper excited about. Ultimately in practice, a lot of those features ended up being a little less than desirable. Probably the first one that comes to mind is this specific storage spot on the top of the bag for your radio. That seemed like a no brainer for me. Your radio is something that's very personal. It's very touchy. You want to take care of it. You don't want to be breaking gimbals or breaking springs and that kind of thing. Like you want your radio to be protected. So having a good spot for your radio in the bag is a big deal. The compartment for your radio just doesn't quite open up far enough. So every time you put the radio in or pull it out, you're bumping your switches. This became super apparent to me right after I switched over to using this bag. I, I decided to take it on one trip initially to see what I thought of the bag. I'd had this bag inside of another checked bag, like inside of a suitcase. When I got home, I noticed that my baggage had been searched by TSA. No big deal, right? When I opened up compartment for the radio, I had two switches fall out of the compartment. TSA in taking the radio out of that compartment busted two switches off of my freaking radio. So it became pretty apparent that that part of the bag wasn't all it was cracked up to be. The next aspect of this bag that I was super excited about was the fact it has a spot for a laptop. My low pro bag did not have a spot for a laptop and I was pretty excited about the possibility of including my laptop in the bag. As you can see, you can absolutely fit a laptop and I have a very large laptop in the bag. But for me, when it's full of all my stuff, it just wasn't practical. It put a lot of pressure on the laptop and I just didn't feel like it was very well protected being in the bag. The next aspect was definitely the little like tool holder thing that was Velcroed in. Now, I thought that that feature was something I was really gonna enjoy, being able to take my tools in and out of my bag and use them at the desk. However, as I haven't had this as an option, I've kind of settled into some methods. I've got all my tools in like a little case that goes inside of the bag. That tends to work out really well for me. And then at home, I've got a nice magnetic wall mounting system for all my tools. And it just didn't end up being practical for me to take my tools out of my bag at home and, and utilize that the way that I kind of hoped that I would. That didn't end up being quite as helpful as I'd hoped. But depending on your situation, that is kind of a feature that could absolutely be cool. And then to that effect, if you've got a smaller laptop, I'm sure my HP laptop would fit great in this bag. So all these things are absolutely gonna have an up and a down. Now finally, the last thing seems super silly, but it is something that this bag absolutely got right and it's freaking amazing. And that's the fact that the zipper pockets on the side of the bag unzip in a way that everything doesn't fall out when your bag's sitting there. So that's really nice. Kind of just an overview of the beta flight bag it's very good and pretty much any of these bags the storage volume of the bags are very very similar on this end of the review but in general although i had some issues with the beta flight bag a lot of this is going to come down to personal preference maybe you have a smaller radio maybe you have a smaller laptop maybe you've only got one set of tools and you need the ability to take them in and out of your bag this bag could be a very very good option for you the last thing to keep in mind is that this beta flight bag has a ton of space and great clips to strap quad to the outside of your bag. So if that's something that's very important to you, this might be the bag. Now the final bag in this shootout is the Torvald Pit Stop Pro. Now at the time of making this video, this is probably the latest and greatest bag on the market. Um, I've been seeing it definitely more and more here lately. And this is the bag that I actually purchased for myself just a couple weeks ago. When the zipper on my Low Pro bag stopped, I temporarily started using the Beta Flight bag, but I kind of felt bad about freeloading on, you know, review product that, uh, that we're gonna be giving away. So I went ahead and got this sucker ordered and and uh, so far, I really, really like it. It's almost comical to me how derivative all these bags tend to be of one another. A lot of these bags have taken a long time to get all of the things right. I believe the Torville bag really does that. So first things first, it opens from the top. Not only that, but it's opening from the same side as your quads are strapped to. So you can set your bag on the desk or on your table or whatever, take your quads off and open the bag without first having to flip the bag over. I know that's super silly, but 
until this bag, the Beta Flight bag and the Low Pro bag all got that wrong, which was super surprising. Just like the Beta Flight bag, the side pockets all unzipped from the right side, which is awesome. The interior of the bag is not a lot different than all the other bags on the market. You've got dividers, you can set it up pretty much however you like. For me, it does fit my tackle boxes, so that's really cool. I found that the volume, the capacity of the bag is on par with everything else. I like that there's a specific spot for the radio. It's still not advisable to leave your crossfire antenna on, but it's a good spot for the radio and I feel like it's relatively protected in there. I find that the side pockets are great for storing props. I can easily get 10 to 15 sets of props in the side pockets. On the back side of the lid, there's a couple of cool features. One, I actually think this is something I will end up using quite a bit. There's a little zipper pouch that's magnetic. If you're anything like me, I'm constantly losing and dropping hardware on the ground, whether it be prop nuts or like screws from a top plate, you know, at a race and trying to make a repair. This is gonna be really nice. A specific spot to stick that stuff I think will be great. Some people seem to be a little excited about this. I think it's on the silly side, but there's a little flap that folds out with another zipper pouch inside of it. Underneath there, there's actually like a little sheet that pulls out. My understanding from Torval is it's actually Actually intended to be a spot for you to set or kneel on without getting your clothes all messy but my thought is if you pull that out and spread it out in some mud fold it up and stick it back in the bag well now your bag's all muddy I'd almost rather get my knees muddy than my bag but if that's the worst part about this bag so be it the bag does have a great laptop pouch I would kind of given up on the idea of putting a laptop in my drone bag just because my laptop's so freaking huge I'm actually really surprised this fits really well and it might lead me to try to consolidate some other things inside of the bag so I have room for my laptop equipment like my mouse, charger, and that kind of thing. So the laptop pouch is absolutely legit and where it's at, I feel like it's very protected. So I'm gonna have to give that a shot for sure. Now, one thing I didn't really talk about with any of these bags is batteries. And that's just because of my personal preference. I don't put drone batteries in my drone bag. This is because typically I'm traveling to races and I've actually flown to quite a few races and I'm a little scared about my tools getting confiscated. So assuming I'm not really pushed on time when I get to the actual event, I will typically check my drone bag inside of it like a checked piece of luggage and I put my drone bag inside of it. And then if you're familiar with the TSA's guidance, like you're not supposed to put LiPo batteries in checked bags. So I typically have like a LiPo safe bag that I put in my carry-on to carry all of my LiPo batteries in and goggle batteries and even, you know, sometimes I'll take the radio batteries out and that kind of thing. So so I could see where that would be important to other people. The Beta Flight bag and the Low Pro bag both kind of came with a specific battery compartment, but the Torval bag does not. If you want to buy their battery bag, it's actually extra. It's an add-on you can buy for it. In general, the build quality of this Torval bag is excellent. This is really the only drone bag I've ever touched that feels like it's got an upgraded zipper on it, which at this point for me is very important because the Low Pro zipper definitely let me down. But at this point in time, if it was my money, I think I would go with this Torval bag. But at the end of the day, it's really gonna depend on your needs. The Torval bag is pretty limited in regard to how many quads you can strap to the outside of it. I think if you got clever and tried really hard, you might be able to get four by kind of double stacking them. But I could see for some pilots, that's not gonna be ideal. For me, I don't really strap a lot of quads to the outside of my bag, so that's not really that important to me. So that's pretty much it for the shootout on these bags. Obviously, this isn't every bag that's on the market. There could be a lot of other bags coming on the market so you know feel free to check those out we might include links as they come up in the description but in my opinion the Torval bag would be a great buy I would absolutely look into the think tank bags depending on your needs whether it be the session or their airport bag that bag looks to be huge and has a lot of space for everything I'm not sure about how it holds up in the build quality but definitely worth checking out the beta flight bag if you need a lot of room to strap a lot of quads to the outside of your bag and you like the independent separate spot to stick your radio. That's an excellent bag. Unless Low Pro does something different, I'm not sure that I would suggest their bags. But in general, if you don't have a drone bag and you're showing up to fun flies or getting with your buddies and you're like Sean Ames from a couple years ago, at first I would keep everything in like a little crates and then I eventually got like an old camera bag that I would stick stuff in. It's one of the best purchases I ever made in buying the Low Pro bag, even though it was not ideal in a few different ways. It still really changed how I went to events and how I handled my gear. So if you don't own a bag 
I would highly suggest finding the right one that's for you. Hopefully this video helped you do that. We do have links to all these bags and even some others in the description of this video. Do us a huge favor. If you're in the market for a bag, use those links to make a purchase. Maybe you're not in the market for a bag, but you appreciate this information. Feel free to use those links to buy anything. I think it'll help us out as well. So of these bags, the Torval bag is one that I just purchased for myself, full price from a retailer. The Low Pro bag, obviously I purchased a long time ago. The Think Tank bag we've got is actually Maddie's bag that someone gave to her at IO. But the Beta Flight bag is a review item and uh, we want to give that away. We're going to do it just like last time. One week from when this original video is published, we're going to do a drawing, probably live on YouTube, where we use a comment picker to find out who's going to win the Beta Flight bag. Now, this time there's a bit of a catch because these bags can be a little expensive to ship. From my experience, probably around $25 to $30 in the US to ship this bag, a lot more overseas. But the good thing is that means someone who really wants this bag is gonna end up getting it for just a shipping cost. So you will be responsible for paying for shipping and then we'll work all that out, getting the cost PayPal before it's shipped and that kind of thing. We'll be doing a drawing on YouTube, so leave a comment below the description of this video if you would like the opportunity to win this bag. Obviously Obviously hit the thumbs up and share this on all your socials and maybe you'll have a better chance of winning. Now, if you're curious about how I've got my Torval bag set up a couple of weeks ago, I actually put together a video in depth about how I pack to go to a drone race. So feel free to head on over to my channel, Heart of America FPV, and uh, check that out if you would like. But nonetheless, guys, thanks for checking this video out. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And as always, stay flying.